you played with some of the greatest attacking players ever, Zico, Maradona, but now I think the game is moving, it's different. There's like, there's almost an obsession with these moves to be players, different stuff. We see Ronaldinho, Zidane doing something. Are they better players or are they just more I don't. I don't think they're necessarily better players, but um, I think certainly because just the way the game's played now, it's a lot quicker. Probably defenders are a lot quicker, so you've got to have something extra to beat yes. defenders. And what happened is, like Zidane, Ronald, the players you've mentioned, they've all got total control of the ball. That's the first thing you must have. Right. You must have total control of the ball. Yes. Because if the defender at any stage says that you've not got total control, then it just helps them out a lot. I mean, if you look at Zidane, for example, he's got on a string. Yeah, and he's, got, he's got the ball in an absolute yes. string. Yeah. So again, it's, it's so difficult for the defender to go, the first thing that you're conscious of, you've got to go really, really tight. Yeah. But if you go tight to Zidane, then he can move it so quickly. And, and again, as I say, with total control of the ball. And, and what happens is, it's all right having tricks, but the tricks will never, ever work unless one, they're perfected. Right. right? And two, again, you have total control of what you're doing. Yes. I mean, I've seen players that you might think, on the training pitch, like you say, well, that 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 that's good. That's a great trick. But, but the game's different. And the and the one, and also you've got to have the confidence in your own ability. These guys, every guy you mentioned there, has got massive confidence in what they're doing. So you've got the you've got control of the ball. You've perfected the trick. Plus you've got the confidence. Would you like to have like if you're playing today? How would you play against them guys? If you had a Zidane, a Ronaldo, a Ronaldinho to play against. I would, would de I would delegate. <laughs> I, would say, I would say to Mark Lawson, you pick him up and I'll sweep really? behind you. I would sweep. Well, the thing is, I played against Maradona when he was 18 and um, oh, he was just light years in front of everybody. And I think really? Oh, yeah. I think at he, 18? At 18, he was, he was so good, it was just untrue. I think he proved in the World Cup in 86 that he was just he was absolutely unique. What you've always had in the great teams is, is individuals yes. that can give you something extra. Yes. This is, this is what you need. Because in the final third of the pitch, especially, if you haven't got the individual that can give you something extra, then you really haven't got a lot. I mean, because goals win your matches, and, yes. and the people that can set you up to make the goals are worth their weight in gold. That's why you'll pay £40 million pounds for a striker, yes. and, and you'll only like pay £5 yeah, million yeah. for a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and as I say, if you've got the guys that can give you something extra with the tricks and the pace and the confidence, then what that does, it gives everybody else in the team massive confidence as well. Because if you've got a Dalglish on your side or a JJ Koch on your side that can give you something extra, then if you're playing centre back, you always look and think, well, well wait a minute, hey, yeah, we if we can. get a bit of trouble here, yeah, we if can. we get up so, against it, yeah. this guy is going to give us that little bit extra final third of the pitch. You've answered my question because I, I was about to ask you when you played in that fantastic Liverpool side, who was the one that gave you that bit extra there? Was oh, Kenny? Dalglish was unbelievable. Really? Oh, absolutely frightening. And he, he wouldn't have probably the same sort of tricks as JJ, but again, again, it's the ability yeah. on the ball, the ability, the first touch, which is always king. Yes. The confidence that left foot, right foot, um, the ability to spot something quickly, because that's another factor. It's yes. all right having the tricks, yes. but you've got to have the, the vision and awareness the to mind. spot. Yeah. I mean, I watched a coach play at Anfield, and you know, he picks one up in, in sort of the left back position, and you think, well, will he beat something? And he, and he, takes in his right foot and he pings it like yeah. 50 yards to yeah. wide in the right and and the thing is it goes straight to feet. Yes. Now again, if again, there's nothing more frustrating in this world than somebody that's got tricks, right, and goes on the pitch, but it, no, it does nothing with them. If you right. go on the pitch, you've got the tricks right. and you do nothing else, yes. then you're not a lot. Yeah. Whereas a coach has got the tricks, beats the defenders, but he also can pick up and play it. And the other thing, he's available for, for passes yeah. because that's another thing. You yes. know, you've got to have, if you're a centre-back in position, then the, <clears throat> the beauty of being on a great side is you've got options. Now, if you've got five or six to pass it to, JJ's always looking for it. You know, he's always looking for it, he's always wanting it, he's always confident. And again, I mean, it must be great to, to be in a... You enjoy watching him? Must, well, it must be great being in a Bolton side. You know, uh. You're playing for Bolton, who are one of the lesser sides in, in the Premiership, and you've got... Great for the players, but what about the supporters? Yeah. To turn up here on a Saturday and watch a culture for Bolton, oh, they, they, they must think they haven't been born. And as I say, on television, he's fantastic. The he's like you'll turn on the television to watch him play. Yes. In the Premier League, other players you enjoy watching? Henri. Yeah. 
Henri is just unbelievably good. For pace, but, 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 well, everything. Pace, the control. It's great watching Arsenal. Steven Gerrard at Liverpool. Ah, I like Gerard. Oh, just, just phenomenal. The other day, no. Oh, Top just class. everything, everything. I mean, he's got. He's, he's, he's like a keen as soon as with pace. Yeah. I mean, just phenomenal. But again, the. the, the he galloped the, the other day in that game. Oh. But the, again, the people that, you know, what, what, you're, what you're looking for a football match is, is, is somebody that can pick the ball up and you think, especially when it's come towards them. That's the other thing about the great players. The difference between your average English player and, and the Brazilians is that when it's come towards them, they're hoping to control it. Yeah. Right, whereas, whereas it just comes naturally. Like you watch a coach, yeah. when the ball's coming towards them, nobody's thinking, well, even if it's coming it's at a great a pace, no, nobody's thinking, is this guy going to control it? Yeah. And, and most of all, he's not even thinking about it. He's just thinking, well, it's going to come to my, my feet yeah. and I'm going to be in possession. Yeah. And whereas if you've got that minute of doubt or a second of doubt, and you're hesitant about the ball coming towards you, then nine times out of ten, it's, it's yeah, going to come off you. Yeah. Um, I, again, people that can hit them for 25 yards. I mean, the thing about a coach is he's no scored a goal in the Premiership. But once, when, I tell you what, even though he's no scored a goal, when he picks up 25 yards from goal, you think he's going to score. Yeah. So you're frightened. Yeah. Or... yeah so you know. So, but the thing again, left foot, right foot. Yeah. That's the other most. You find that at the, at the highest level, if you, I mean, unless you've got one that's Unbelievable. If, unless you've got a foot that's exceptional. I mean, Maradona, you could say, didn't have a great right foot. Yeah. But the highest level, if you've got somebody that's got two great feet, you go back to a player that played in the English uh, Premiership, Ginola. Mm. Watch him play. No, he wasn't the best player in the world, but you tell me which, which was his better foot, left or right. No Can't idea. Can't tell. We've got that's one here, the, one of the kids, Jason. Well, I, I mean, the, I've coached him for years. Yeah. I said to him yesterday, hit that with your best foot, and he hit with his left. I said, you're not left footed. He said, I am. And like he's, and that's a good thing, eh? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's the best right. thing you can have because as a defender, if I'm going to, you, right, you say you've got two great feet, I'm going to take towards you. I, if you've bad in your left, I can go like that and put you in your left. If you've bad in your right, I can go like that and put you in your right. But if you've got two good ones, I don't know where you're going to go, mm -hmm. right? So, so yeah. you can, you know, you can't channel your way. Did you ever, like, if you were playing against a particularly good attacking player, like study him or look at him or, or you just play the game? And... It was difficult. Um, when you're playing against great players, the other factor, of course, is the movement. I mean, when, when I played in the European Cup against a guy called Rummenigge from yeah. Bayern Munich, the German yeah. player, I mean, he taught me two or three great things about movement. And, really? and as much as I never played against anybody that could move across your body at really? the same time as the ball was coming. Really? And he was like, he had it done to a fine art. And I mean, I, play, I, I was probably about 26 at the time. I was right in my peak and I was, mm. I was, I was quick. And I was fortunate that I was, uh, to be fair, I was a bit quicker than he was because time and time again, especially at Anfield, when the ball was played on the right-hand side, he would come across me right at the split second when it was played. Yeah. You know, so I'd be chasing him. I would yeah. never be in front of him because, yeah. I mean, that was my 40. My 40 yes. was reading it coming and getting a position where, you know, I could get to the ball first. I'm playing against this guy and he just kept timing and I couldn't even read him coming really? across. No, couldn't get him. He kept on coming across my body. And of course, that's a big part of the game. Again, when, you, when you're talking to television about the pace, the control, the movement, the touch, the technique, there's so many facets to the game. People, yeah. think, people think that, oh, it's a football, you practice, and you know, if you can hit it for 25 yards, then you're, yeah, if you do yeah, a couple of tricks, yeah. you're a complete player, but there's more to it's it. Everything. There's everything, as I say, you know, pace is great, pace and movement is great, pace, movement and control. You get up against those three, then as a defender, yeah, You've got yeah. major problems. You know, if you look at the game today, who would remind you of yourself? Um, I don't think there's really anybody. Right. And as much as that, when you know, I was a centre back that couldn't defend. I was, you know, think? well, <laughs> like my, my, my great assets were on the ball. Yeah. Uh, my ability to read it and ability to get in position. Um, I was even though I was six feet two, I wasn't great in there. And and when it came to tackling. Somebody said I couldn't tackle a fish supper, but um, you know I was I was I was different from what you would look for in a centre back. Ferdinand, though. Well, Ferdinand is a fantastic player, but he's definitely a better defender than Ava was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he probably wouldn't be as good in the ball, and he probably wouldn't be as good at reading it right. as, as I was. But he's definitely better better defender than I was.